thank you for coming. This is my presentation about the MBS FileMaker plugin. My name is Christian Schmitz and I'm the developer of the plugin for the last 11 years. And I may have got some functions for you. So if you're new to the plugin, well, we have currently 4,800 functions. Nobody is using everyone. <laughs> The average is maybe 10 functions. Well, the plugin may be worse to get for those 10 functions you need. This year already I added over 490 functions because people ask it for more functions. So if you have an idea, please send me an email. Maybe I can have something already or maybe I can add something. We have 495 example projects. So if you have a week of holiday and you can do 60 per day, you could manage to get them done in a week and take a look at each of them. But normally you have a problem and then you start looking for an example which shows similar things like the ones you need. When, when, starting, when we started the plugin, we made the decision to only make one plugin file. That makes installation much easier than all the other plugin vendors because you only have to deal with one file. You move it in the extensions folder or you use the install plugin script and you get it installed. We support FileMaker 8.5 and newer, including 16, of course, with a 7.2 release and a few more improvements in the latest one. The plugin already runs on version 17 in case you have it. <laughs> the plugin supports uh, the desktop with FileMaker Pro, Advanced, and the runtimes. You can use the plugin on the server for server side scripting, for custom web publishing, and for WebDirect. You can also use our plugin on the FileMaker Cloud because we got a Linux version of the plugin. We have a plugin version for the FileMaker iOS SDK with over 2,800 functions already available. <laughs> so, uh, for FileMaker Go, there is no way to get a plugin into FileMaker Go, but you can use uh, Perform Script on server. Some clients use that. For example, the user takes a picture with FileMaker Go, it's put in a container, it's it gets transferred to the server. On the server, you can run a script to rotate the picture, and you see the rotated picture in FileMaker Go. But if you want to use locally on the iOS device the plugin, you need the FileMaker SDK. Imagine how your calculation dialog would look like if there would be 4,800 entries by the plugin. FileMaker has about, I think, three or 400 functions. So the dialog would be very full. So we decided to make one function only. And the first parameter to the function is the function name you want to call. So we have a little dispatcher there which looks up the function you want and what well, called the write C function. The function name can be a calculation or can be from a field, from whatever you get. So for example, some people offer um, Context menus where they can select a graphical effect for image editing. And depending on which entry in the menu is selected, they take from the menu the name of the function and call it. Every function can fail, sometimes out of memory, sometimes file permissions, whatever. There is always a possibility to ask with the is error function if the last function called failed. And a lot of functions. Return, param, uh, return reference numbers. So, for example, if you load a picture, you get a number. Then you can call a function to scale the picture. You pass in the number of the image to scale and the parameter of what size you need. And then you call another function to write the file back to the container. And there you pass the image reference again. And finally, you call a function to remove the image from memory and pass in the last time your reference number. 
That's very common because we make each function a little bit uh, small function, so it does a little thing, and you have to call several functions and the in sequence to do whatever you want to do. I don't want to list all the functions. I decided to just go through a few highlights. So first, we have a lot of curl functions. You may have seen that FileMaker 16 now also uses curl for insert URL, and they offer a couple of options there, but our plugin does much more. I even have a comparison chart on the, on the blog where you can see the differences. So we do HTTP, FTP, SFTP up and download. If you need to get a file somewhere or need to send a file somewhere, that's very useful. SFTP is F file transfer over SSH, which is, uh, in my opinion, better than normal FTP. And so we use that for all projects. And the insert from URL from FileMaker doesn't support SFTP. We have a lot of options for SSL and TLS for your encryption of the data transfer. We have a lot of proxy options. So if you are in a corporate environment and you need to go through a proxy to reach the internet, you can do that. We support authentication in various ways. Our transfers can run synchronously, so your script is waiting. They can run asynchronously. So you can have several transfers running simultaneously on the main thread, or you can have them run in the background, which means we run them on a separate CPU thread, so they may end up running on a separate CPU core, and nothing in FileMaker except if FileMaker would crash could stop it. So the background transfers continue to run even if a dialog is showing. This enables us to also use parallel transfers. I do have an email, a batch email example, which sends eight emails in parallel, because that makes the email sending much faster than if you just send one after each other. Yeah, the time you need to log into the mail server in one thread can be used on the other thread to send the data can be used in the next, in the main thread, to build the next email, so running it in parallel makes it more efficient. We support all kinds of custom requests, like file deletion on FTP, or moving an email on IMAP. You can delete and rename files for FTP operations, and as FTP, of course. If you need to use web services, you can use, of course, all the SOAP and REST web service and all the other formats with our plugin. You can use the TLS 1.2 encryption, which is a, a currently the best one. You can include all the custom HTTP headers for anything, for authentication tokens or whatever you need. We have a lot of JSON and XML related functions you can use to prepare your data for upload or to pass the data when it's coming back. And we allow you to send a form data. Uh, we are allowed to send you form fields without having a web viewer showing the form, so you can directly interact with PHP scripts who expect the data coming in, like from a web form. We can send emails, multiple attachments, HTML and plain text, including inline graphics, we do the correct text encoding, so all your Chinese character or Japanese characters uh, appear correctly on the receiving side. And we have this batch email example for sending out newsletters very quickly. We can also receive emails. So you can set up an email box where you get automatic emails. You can have your scripts go and fetch the first email, process it, delete it, and go start over. You can Pass the emails and get subject, recipients, text, HTML, attachments, and the headers. The attachments can be put in a container or saved in a file. You can, of course, delete, move emails. You can send any IMAP command you want. And when we download emails, the example detects duplicates just to avoid that we process emails a second time. Um, next topic, PDF. FileMaker can create PDFs but you may need more. 
on Mac, we have the PDF kit framework from Apple, which allows us to do a lot of PDF operations. But for Windows, Linux, and for more on Mac, we need the cross-platform PDF library. And a few years ago, we choose uh, we, we choose um, Dyna PDF, which is an add-on we sell to the plugin. You can use both uh, ways um, to merge PDFs. Like if you make an invoice in FileMaker, you can add um, your terms of services page. You can split PDFs, so if you make a um, document database, you can store each page as its own record. You can get a picture from a page if you want to show a preview or if you want to show your PDF in WebDirect without the user being able to save the PDF. They just get a picture. And we can print a PDF directly on Mac using PDF Kit, on Windows using Dyna PDF, so you can have your FileMaker Pro or your FileMaker server print a PDF automatically without user interaction. And we can extract text, so you can find text on a page, and with Dyna PDF we can also extract text in a certain area. With Dyna PDF we can do much more. For example, we can convert PDFs to PDF-A or PDF-X format if you need that. Some companies nowadays require invoices to be in PDF-A format or anything they get should be converted to PDF-A for archiving. We can embed XML data in a PDF file, which is in Germany now a standard for invoicing. So the PDF is just for printing and viewing by human, and any uh, automatic processing just looks on the XML. You can create form fields, you can query form fields, you can set form fields. Or you can simply send a PDF with form fields to your customer. They can fill it out, send it back, and you can automatically read all the form values and put them in a new record. Yeah? Is the create form fields allowing you to take a data stream from a field and paste it onto the PDF document? Is that what you mean by create? No, that's, um, you call a plugin function for the PDF you have in memory to say, please create a new text field on those coordinates on the current page. And then when you save the PDF and open it in Apple Preview or in Acrobat Reader, you can fill in the form value. So this is not with clicking on the mouse. The plugin functions are in general for automatic things. So like if you want to create for each of your customer an individual PDF with individual form fields, you can do that, automate it, and run it a thousand times. Can you, can you take a PDF that already has form fields and take data from, from FileMaker and push it to the Sure. Fields? There's an example to list all the form fields in a document. So you can see the names of the fields and the data type. Or so text or pop-up menu or checkbox, whatever, and you can, of course, fill them. Uh, there are a couple of um, text-related things uh, in Europe where people get fill-able PDFs from the government, put the data in, and send them back. If you run a document database, you may want to extract images from a PDF or text Text can be extracted in a certain area, which means if you get PDFs which have the same ID number somewhere on the page, on the same spot, you can just extract the number. And of course, we can protect uh, PDFs with a password if you need, and, and forbid the printing for the user. You can also find and highlight text in a PDF. This is very useful if you make a search feature in your document database and you show the user the PDF, you can highlight the text inside the PDF page. You can also find and replace text. Next, we can create our PDFs, of course, from scratch, and we can use tables for layouts, which allows us to lay out our, well, layout by Dyna PDF instead of by FileMaker, which allows us a few more options on, um, yeah overall. We can uh, work with annotations. You can add annotations like a link annotation so the user can click on a word and go, the browser opens. We can of course also flatten annotations so they are no longer editable. 
we can add links from from a topic or index page to jump to the right page in the document. We can also digitally sign PDFs. So if you need uh, PDFs to be signed, you can use our plugin. We also have an optimize command, which can be used to recreate the PDF without any errors. Scale down images if you want to reduce the file size and replace any duplicate fonts or images with references and remove the private data, for example, the data from InDesign. This way you can make much smaller PDF files and especially as FileMaker loves to put images in your PDF files with, with a high resolution, like 500 dpi. And for just emailing, 150 dpi would be enough, so you can reduce the file size by 90% easily. You can use our plugin functions to put style text right from a FileMaker for field on the left into a PDF on the right. So if you put text on a PDF page, you can not just use plain text, but you can also use style text from the FileMaker fields. Next topic, encryption. The MBS plugin offers a couple of encryption and hash functions which you can use to well encrypt data on one side of transfer it and decrypt on the other side. For a couple of web services, we need to provide hashes for passwords for here yeah, the HMAC and the PBKDF2. Well, if you know what it is and if you need it, we have it. So, uh, FileMaker 16 offers a few encryption hash functions, um, but um, you may want to check what you want to use because our functions are available for FileMaker 15.2. And our encryption is, uh, of data is compatible to, the, for example, the OpenSSL command line tool or to the encryption used in PHP and other languages so you can decrypt it without our plugin. For the encryption function in FileMaker, it's not yet documented how it works, so nobody can decrypt it outside of FileMaker. Next thing, we have a couple of things for data structures. So we offer global variables, which are independent of the file they are used in. We have a dictionary for an associative array. So you can store data based on a key to a value. And that's stored in memory, and the lookup is faster than any database query. We also have a quick list, which allows you to store a list of text in memory where the access is much faster than using the get value function for list in a variable. Also things you notice when you have 100,000 entries in your list. <laughs> so. Next thing, Word files. Some people use Word. And if you have an existing Word file as a template and you can put in some tags, we can replace those tags with values and you can get a customized Word file. For one company doing invoices with Word, we added a function to add table rows. So there is a, a table in the Word document for the items of the invoice, and we just duplicate the rows, and we can make as many rows as needed. And of course, fill each row with the values needed. Next thing, we have audio and video recording. So we can well, record audio and video, but we can also just take a picture from the camera, which may be useful if you just want to have a picture. Like a picture of your user, or picture of items you got. We have clipboard functions, so you can put something on the clipboard or get it back. This includes style text and file references, so people can copy files in the Explorer or in the Finder. You can get the file passes from the clipboard. And FileMaker itself uses XML data on the clipboard for, for example, copying a layout or script steps. And you can, can get those XML files from the clipboard and put them back on the clipboard. And we have a snippet storage example database, which use that so you can store snippets, like 
If you use the same scripts or the same buttons all again and again, you can store them in a snippet database and put them back on the clipboard at any time. Next thing. We can use the address book on Mac because Apple offers a framework for that. You can fill in uh, contacts in your local database, sync them to Google, to iCloud, whatever. The benefit is that if your customer is in your customer database and you sync it in the address book and your customer is calling you, his name will appear on your phone. Next, we have FileMaker SQL commands. So you can use SQL inside of FileMaker, including insert, delete, and update. And we have a couple of uh, helping functions which allow you to much easier do inserts and delete without writing your SQL command yourself. You just pass in the information, which file, which table name, which field name, which value, and then again, field name, value, field name, value. The plugin preserves the data type, so if you you can insert a container this way or date. You can insert records in a table in a different file, in a different layout, without switching the layout. That's very convenient. You can also make a select in one file, in one table, and then have all those records being inserted in a different table, in a different file. This makes very efficient file uh, record copy. You can also have a tab return text create records. For example, if your user copies data from an Excel document, it will be a tab return in the clipboard. And you can paste that and fill records with the values. And we can run selects and get containers and dates without conversion to text, which we want to avoid. You can also connect to other databases. So while FileMaker offers ESS to connect to a few databases, we can do many more and we can avoid ODBC. For MySQL or Microsoft SQL or Postgres and others, we can go directly over the native client to the database. And this avoids a couple of problems involved with ODBC. We have functions to copy records to FileMaker or from FileMaker to the other database. For example, if you have a MySQL uh, database for your web store, you can go there every day and say, give me all the orders uh, from today. And then with one line, copy those records into your FileMaker database. How does that, how does that compare with importing every SS? That's a good question. Is it, is it, is it comparable? Or? Um, I don't know. Well, we can uh, we can do batch uh, transfers of records, so we can get a thousand records in one chunk. Mm -hmm. um, so I would expect it to be faster compared to committing each record on its own, right. of course. But please try it. Sure. We have schedules, so the plugin manages a list of things to do. You can run a script by name, if you like, but you can also schedule to start a script at a certain time, in a certain time, at a certain time stamp, or when the user is idle. So for example, you can run a script every night at 5 o'clock in the morning, you can run a script in 5 seconds, or you can run a script when the user didn't move the mouse for 30 seconds, and you can log out the user. We have a lot of file functions. Copy a file, move a file, rename a file, delete a file, create a directory. You can query file size, deck, text, dates. You can unmount a, or mount a network volume. This is important for the FileMaker server because the FileMaker server runs with its own user account. So if the admin mounts a disk, the FileMaker server can't access it. But the FileMaker server can use our plugin to mount a disk himself and then copy files to the disk and then unmount it. Every night by script. No problem. 
And you can check if a file is in use. This way you know if the FileMaker server has a file open, for example. We have a couple of image editing if functions. So you can load images, you can save them in a new format, and a lot of people use that to convert one of the 20 file formats we support to maybe JPEG or PNG to have a standard file format. You may want to create uh, to scale pictures, rotate them, to make sure all the pictures are maybe upward, uh, are maybe saved as a thumbnail in a smaller size. You can draw text and vector graphics on your pictures. For example, one user writes on uh, the pictures which are not yet purchased, a big text on top of them. You can find position of color pixels in an image. And if you want, you can also read the XF tags and IPTC for the metadata. And you can define hotkeys. So you can trigger a script by a certain key combination. This combination can include shift, option, command, control, and a few keys. For example, I know a customer who has, um, gets an email, presses F5, a script will run, will use an Apple script to get the text of the email, and then create a record. So your hotkeys can be global for all applications or just local when FileMaker is in the front. And we can create buttons for touch bar if someone here has a MacBook with touch bar. So you can uh, have touch bars per window or per app. You can do evaluation of an expression or trigger script. And the example, for example, does a button for data view and debugger and moving forward and backward on the touch bar. And we have JSON and XML import functions. And the great thing here is uh, they automatically create tables and fields as needed. So if your customer has a big XML or JSON file and you just want to import it regularly, you import it once, get all the tables and fields created. Then you can build layouts and scripts using those fields. And the next time, the same, the new file can be imported again, and if there is a new field, it will be added. The data will be filled in the fields, and this way you can save a lot of work. Next, we can work with the web viewer. So we can run JavaScript in the web viewer, do a lot of things, like if you show a Google map, we can run the JavaScript to make a pin on a certain address. You can get the HTML and the text you see on the web viewer. You can fill form fields and send them. Like if you go every day on the same order page and you have to type your address every day, you can make a button to automatically fill your address into the fields. We can get all the, the text, the links, the images, whatever is in the page. We can print the web page and get, web, uh, get a picture or a PDF. Next, we offer sockets for networking. So if you have a device which talks over a TCP and UDP socket and you have the need to implement your own protocol, you can use that. For example, a few people use our socket or our serial port functions to connect to a scale. And whenever someone puts something on the scale, they can offer a button to ask the scale for the current weight and then store it in FileMaker. So you can use the sockets, or you can use the serial ports for that. Works fine with USB to serial adapter. So it depends on what your device has. Some, some scales have Ethernet connectors. Some have old-fashioned R2C2 ports. And we support calendars, because Apple offers, again, a framework on Mac to work on reminders and calendars. So you can have a FileMaker solution fill in the calendars for all your employers with the important dates you have. And I know at least one company which has a Mac sitting in the office, which does nothing else, but just to check every hour for new 
events. And this computer has over has all the calendars for the different users subscribed, so it can fill for all the uh, for all the people working there the events <laughs> and the reminders, of course. Again, this can be synchronized to the iPhone or with Exchange or Google to wherever you need. Then we have functions to control printing. So we can um, control the print dialog on both Mac and Windows. You can select the printer, the paper, the paper source, like the tray, or if you want black and white or color, whatever. Yeah. Yeah, the copy count is included. Okay. And the range. So from, from to. If something is missing, let me know. So, next, a few utility functions. So, your FileMaker solution doesn't need to have a FileMaker icon in the dock on the Mac, or you can change the app name in the menu bar. We can speak text on Mac and Windows. So FileMaker only supports Mac, as far as I know. You can measure the text width. So if you have a piece of text and you want to know if it fits in a field, you can ask the plugin. Yeah. Are you talking here about the, uh, something that a program like InDesign calls a text overflow and a, a text field that has yeah. more text that can be yeah. Well, if you have a one-line field and your text is too long, FileMaker will just remove words until it fits. And you can write a little custom function which measures how wide the text is. And if it's too long, you can go, go backwards and say, I remove a few letters, I put three dots there, measure, is that okay? If not, I remove a little bit more text, dots again. And so you can dynamically make the text length to fit the field. I've done that and worked with font sizes, but you know how in, uh, in InDesign you get a little plus sign that says the container here? Yeah. Well, I can't change how FileMaker displays it, right. but we can make sure that we pre-calculate how wide the text is and make the right amount of text there. So, if a script is, is uh, Triggered by a click on a button, we can detect if it was a right mouse click or a left mouse click. And you can then do different actions depending on which mouse button was used. And for the database design report, we have a function to automatically create the database design report well, by a script. So you can run a script each evening and make an export of your database design report, and then you can put it on a version tracker so you can over, over time see all the difference you made. And on Windows we can query the management instrumentation. That allows us to get a lot of values about the Windows machine, including all the hardware, the software status, and much more. You can zip files, you can listen for notifications from the system, like for example if the screen changed the resolution or if a hard disk, if a disk was mounted or unmounted. We can disable AppNap, which is a Mac feature to sleep FileMaker when, when the system wants to save power. So you can say, please don't sleep, please don't sleep the display. You can use SSH commands to connect to a different computer, run a command line. What? Telnet, yeah, sure. Telnet is also available with the curl functions, but this is an uh, extra function set for SSH. Um, like if you want to log into your FileMaker cloud server regularly and maybe ask what the, what's going on. <laughs> and uh, you can use LDAP functions with our plugin to, well, change values on an LDAP server. For example, if you use FileMaker to do the authentication for your uh, FileMaker database by LDAP, you can then also manage your users in FileMaker and have the, uh, if you change the user, have that being uploaded to the LDAP server. Next thing, we can scan. 
So we can use flatbed scanners and document feeders. We have several function sets for that. Image capture is the current Mac favorite. Windows image accretion, well, is for Windows. Twain is the old interface for Mac and Windows. And it's no longer really a first class citizen. So if you have a scanner, please look what driver you get. If you get a um, driver for a modern driver for Mac, you can use the digital image application on Mac and then also use the plugin. On Windows, you need a VR driver, for, well, Windows image acquisition driver. So you can uh, use the plugin to scan. And you can scan in any case, you can scan with and without dialog. So you can do it completely automatically. You can set a lot of options. So some people have it automated that they can put a stack of papers on the scanner. It scans each page, uses the plugins OCR feature to get the text, and then stores it in a database with the text for full text search. And you can also create a PDF of each page or of all the pages. And we can use Java if you need. Sometimes we have customers who get a little Java library they need to use for banking or for whatever else. And so you can load a Java object, you can create instances of the class, you can call methods, get back values. Yeah. Can be useful. File system events. We can trigger a script if something in the file system changes. So you can have a folder, and if the user drops a file, you get a script triggered, you can process the file, and then you can delete it or move it. On the Mac, there's a FS events database, so we can look for events in the past. So you can ask, did anyone mess up my documents folder since the last time my solution was running? And we can show context menus. So at any point on the screen, you can show a menu. You can use styles, checkboxes, icons, colors to make a nice menu. And if something is triggered, uh, is clicked, you can have a script being triggered or an evaluation of an expression. Some people use the menus for the navigation and the solution. So they have a button on each layout for the menu and then Pick something. You can use right click, yeah. Yeah, sure. That was the reason we had the function to detect if a mouse click was the right mouse click. Yeah. So you can then show the menu. So if you ever wondered uh, how to get rid of the scroll elasticity, elasticity. Okay, even if you are just in layout mode, you can use the scroll wheel to scroll your content and it will bounce back on the edges. And you can disable that with the plugin. And we have syntax highlighting in, in FileMaker based on our own rule set. So we can turn lines red if there's an error or make sure that lines have different um, different colors depending on what, what topic they are. We have context menus for various things. We have block highlighting for the ifs and the loops. Um, you can search the relationship graph and the script, and we have a go to line command. Those editions are all Mac only, because on Mac I can modify the script workspace, or on Windows, well, it's all custom controls from FileMaker, and I can't do anything. So this is an example for the block highlighting. So if you click on one if, you see the else if and the end if for this block, which can be very useful if the script is longer than the than, fit, than it fits on the screen. So here's an example of the context menu. So we offer there, right on the line, um, the activate and deactivate commands, the copy and paste commands, and you can copy the content of the table. And if you have a script, um, a run script command, you can jump to that script in the context menu. And I added that 
last year, and then FileMaker 16 came, and they allowed you to command click on the, on the line to do the same. Yeah. We have a preference dialog, so you can turn on and off things. All those features uh, can be turned on and off. There is also a minimum font size for formulas, which can be very helpful. So you can uh, make sure your your text is not too small in the formal dialog. Uh, next, we have XML functions. We can query XML subtrees, get text values. We can even create local variables based on the values of an XML. We can work with attributes and list all the variable node names. And recently we got uh, Windows user notifications functions, so you can show a notification on the, for the Windows user. We also have functions for iOS and for Mac, of course. We got functions for the Windows registry, so if you need to change anything in the registry, you can do that. We can use uh, system certificates for our curl transfers, or you provide your own certificates, it's up to you. And I improved for the plugin for FileMaker 16 by rewriting the web viewer code and the syntax highlighting. And we got an MBS script step, which makes the programming a little bit easier. And we got functions to send emails using the mail client on Windows. With Outlook or Thunderbird, you can add attachments, HTML, multiple recipients. And here's an example. This is um, well, the German version of Outlook. And with an HTML email. And here are the notifications. So you see the iOS notification, the Windows notification, and a notification on Mac. Uh, do you notice anything strange on this picture? Yeah, the line numbers are not the same size as the text. The reason is some plugin increased the text size. Sadly, the line numbers don't adjust, but the text size is very good. <laughs> so you can use the little buttons on the top right for plus and minus to adjust the size of the font for your scripts. And some people appreciate it. <laughs> So, the last version is 7.3. I added read and write for binary files, so you can read any file format. You just need to know what the well, format is. You can control the AV player on iOS, so if you play a, con a video in a container on iOS, you can now query well, the current play time, you can jump to a time, you can get a picture of the, what's showing. We can pass XML once and query it often. So if you have a huge XML file and you want to read it, you can pass it once. It stays stored in memory, and then you can run queries against the XML in memory. If you use a new card windows, you can get a script triggered if the user is clicking outside the card window with the mouse. And then, for example, you can hide the card. For our dialog functions, well, you can now specify the position where the dialog should show. And we have, we got new SQL commands where you can insert or update records. So if the record is existing already with the same primary key, we can do an update. And we got some social, measure, social message dialogs for iOS. So we can post to Twitter and Facebook directly, you can provide in your script the text, the recipients, the pictures, whatever you want to include. We show the dialog and the user can click post and it's posted. Same for email and text messages where you can provide the content and the user can then click send or cancel. We do have a website, monkeypadsoftware.com. We have a couple of videos on the website. We have a blog where I post about new things regularly. 
And you can also follow me on Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, and Sing to get those updates. We also have a mailing list where I post when a new version is available and you can uh, participate on the discussion there. Yeah. And now we can demonstrate some things if you if there's anything you want to see. Can you show the subscription? Yeah. Um, so let's launch FileMaker in English. Oops, a lot of servers here. And did you um, So, scrolling down, there's MBS command. Uh, this is a generic command, so it's just to help you call the plugin, and so you can specify the function here, and specify where it should go. All right, let me put that in a new script. Uh, select destination, let's say title. And now we run it, save, and there you see the, uh, the version in the title field. So it's a convenient way to call the plugin. I still prefer using the set variable or set field commands because those are compatible to FileMaker 15. But if you just use 16, you can of course use the new script step. With our plugin, you can even define your own script step. So here's an example one, uh, just a concat, just take, puts two texts together, but it's an example, and um, you can make your own if you like. So extensions, there's a, a file defining those own script steps. So you can uh, so you can define on script steps for things you like to have as a script step. Just an idea I had while testing 16. Um, any other questions for things? Yeah? Two things. You mentioned um, mapping for Thunderbird on Windows. What about on Macintosh? Uh, the MAPI uh, interface is a feature of Windows. On Mac, you can only use Apple Script to control those mail applications. You, you would want to be able to answer the phone and uh, pull up the contact record. Are we using caller ID somehow with the plugin? Or? I think I was just syncing with the contact database. We were looking yeah. at an address book. Yeah. I think the idea was to write an address book from FileMaker. So when someone calls your cell phone, it's in your address book, so you can see it another way. Uh, for Windows, we do have the tapey functions, which you can use with a phone system to, to get things like caller ID. But ta tapey is deprecated or whatever, is dying. So modern phone systems use a web service where you can just query yeah, well, the caller ID. Do you, um, is there a demo period or how, how, how uh, do you yeah. You can download the plugin, you can install it, you can try it for as long as you want. It may complain about the missing license from time to time with a dialogue, but you can click it away. And when you like the plugin, we appreciate if you buy a license. Yeah. Um, yes. For for the maybe functions, it doesn't matter if FileMaker or Outlook has the same bit number. So from 64 bit to 32 bit is not a problem, at least as far as I know. So please try it and have fun. FileMaker itself uses a different API with the uh, only components, and you may have noticed that. It can happen that Outlook is no longer responding or FileMaker. That's because there's an eight second timeout and FileMaker doesn't increase the timeout uh, to a bigger value like an hour. <laughs> so the standard timeout is eight seconds and then 
you get this dialog uh, server not responding. Yeah, it's bad. But maybe they are redoing that for 17. Yeah? Are you able to uh, attach a PDF file from WebDirect? You can uh, run our PDF functions on. Yeah, well, on the on the server, you can use our plugin to work with the PDFs and send the email. The email would be sent using SMTP server, of course, because on WebDirect we we can't access the user interface. And thank you for coming, and see you at the booth. <laughs>